Hey what's up guys, for those of you who have been following the Explorer Dart Blaster development Facebook page or the Nerf Bots and Reviews blog, you'll know that as of late, the Explorer group released a Explorer X Power Long Strike kit and I'm actually very pleased to announce to you guys that I've purchased one kit, one of these kits and I have it on hand right now and I'm going to give you a review of it. Uh, WX Looney was nice enough to drop it by my place and yes I had to purchase it, uh, I don't get these stuff for free, you know, I earn my keep and uh, you know the money goes back and it comes around in the in terms of uh, more developments for the community so I'm gonna give you guys a full review on this kit um, all the different parts and of course my two cents worth right so I'm gonna start off with this right this packet in here contains a few things uh, one of which you have to take note that it has a pair of very very small screws and they're of a pretty I don't know, unique size, it's a bit bigger than the regular machine screw, I don't even know what kind of size you call this, but uh, machine screw sizes, it has a long bolt as you can see, I'm going to try and uh, pour it out gently so I won't lose the screws, okay so this is the bolt, and uh, get the screws out, alright, I'm going to put this aside, so you guys can have a look, this is the size of the screw, uh, yeah, it's about it's about the same size as the kind of screws that we use for the R3 uh, homemade blasters anyway here is the long bolt and uh, it comes with a nut on the top uh, it looks like an anti-slip kind of a nut at the back so that's a pretty good uh, addition to this kit and uh, it has a push nut fastener type of washer on the end put this aside and uh, of course in this thing over here is the so called grip or the new priming grip that will go on to the top of your long strike like so and you basically screw it in place and then you um, thread the whole bolt through and uh, yeah and it becomes your new priming handle um, you can see the detail over here this is pretty nice it gives you a some form of a grip and uh, it's made out of the same uh, rigid plastic that we all know and love from the Explorer group the same plastic that's used in the long shot shotgun grip and of course on the bolt sleds and you can see the Explorer logo over here uh, so it's pretty nifty, it looks pretty sleek and uh, it's, very, it's very well made. Put this aside and uh, also along with the kit you get a 6kg spring right? Uh, which is like I guess identical to most of the other springs that you can get in the market like from Black Tactical or from the Orange Mount Works uh, site. So this is a 6kg um, I don't know, spring upgrade and then you get this thing which is pretty nifty and this is a explorer bolt sled for the long strike and uh, as you can tell uh, this part over here has been cut out much like the recon massacre kit um, you have to actually remove the old bolt lock from the uh, stock long strike part and put it on here and uh, this thing is also made of the same polyurethane resin and it's pretty good uh, ABS plastic something something but yeah anyway you can see the Explorer uh, logo on the sides here and uh, this thing is pretty sturdy made to specially withstand the strength of the uh, 6 kg spring put this one aside then comes the I guess the middle part or the core of the kit uh, it comes in three parts so this little disc over here goes into the uh, muzzle area much like the long shot Explorer X Power Kit and it threads around here to keep it centered. This will be your new barrel which is a, a replacement and um, it also holds a new so called dart gate I guess or the receiver end of the bolt and here you can see the uh, original, the, not really the original sorry, the Explorer bolt um, which is supposed to go onto the bolt sled <sighs> like so. Let me just show you guys. Yep, it's supposed to go on like that. Right, and you guys must be wondering what about the plunger system? Uh, so apparently, uh, I was told by WX Looney aka Mark Loon uh, that you have to actually cut off your stock plunger and then uh, thread it in like this part just shove, shove it in like how you would with a PVC pipe or tube fitting and uh, I'm just guessing that this is going to be airtight I've not done this before and I've only seen pictures of it on the Explorer uh, Dart Blaster development page so I'm going to have to try this out myself now this part over here is threaded and I don't know why um, but yeah so this this uh, end of the chambering area reminds me very much of the uh, long shot X power kit so this long strike X power kit apparently will fit in this way so it feels a lot more uh, airtight than a long shot X power kit 
as you can see it doesn't even drop even when I shake it so I have to really pull it out like so so I'm hoping that this will get an even stronger or even better air seal right so these are all the things in the kit whoops sorry for the interruption guys uh, I made a mistake while I was filming this part of the video I would like to state that the grip and the bolt snap are sold as two separate items apart from the rest of the stuff which makes up the long strike Explorer X Power kit so uh, once again the grip is one item the bolt snap is one item and the rest of the parts are all called the Explorer long strike kit now back to the video and uh, next up I'm going to actually uh, do an installation video but before that I have something to show you guys for the sake of this video I actually have a brand new inbox white out long strike um, I really like this white out series I actually intended to keep this new inbox just as a collector's uh, item because I actually have some of the white out uh, blasters that I just want to keep like the Maverick for example because I think they're really cool and personally um, I feel that this is probably still Nerf's best uh, paint job or paint scheme or color colorway um, that they've ever released so far of course I have not yet seen the new uh, Elite series and I don't know what colorway that's going to be um, the, the other one that I think is going to be really really cool is the I think it's called the Pyragon uh, the Nerf Vortex red and white thing I'm a sucker for red and uh, so I'm just going to unbox this one just for the sake of doing this mod and uh, of course I'm going to show you how it fires stop I mean, you guys should already know uh, the long strike is sold as Nerf's uh, longest Nerf blaster, but there's no point in having such a long three foot blaster when it shoots like crap. So, anyway, here goes. Seems to be stuck. Give me a moment. Here we go. The whiteout long strike in all its whiteout glory. And I really like the color scheme. I'm just gonna get right in there I'm just gonna be working with the main gun over here so that's what I'm gonna get at I'm gonna grab one half of the priming bar I love how they stick all the stickers telling you you know you have to snap on the priming handle blah 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 yeah, just come on already come on man I am so weak okay it's off I'm gonna have to remove this sticker over here who doesn't leave too much of a residue yep that's fine yep stock sucks you know none of us really like the stock sound the sound so anyway uh, just to be fair I'm gonna have to use uh, not really have to I'm gonna be using the Explorer Stefan clip because uh, whenever you install an X power kit you're not able to use the regular Nerf clip, so I'm gonna be fair and I'm gonna be firing off this blaster with the X Power kit and I'm gonna be loading it up with a total of six pink foam uh, felt tip slug style Stefans and uh, yep, so you have six darts over here. I'm going to load it into the long strike. Okay, and I'm gonna take the camera and shift it over here and I'm gonna be firing outside my hall out into the hallway and you'll realize what crappiness this is okay bring the camera over there here we go all right so you see that door over there that yellow door I'll be firing from right at the hinge of my doorway which is over here and uh, you'll realize that uh, the darts probably won't fly very far and I'm guessing that it won't even make it to that door over there so let's give it a shot dude the dart just dropped out on the floor <laughs> check it out here's the first shot okay so the second shot another one let's see if this happens again third shot Do that's funny. I can fire at you. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's too funny. Ah, uh, let me just shift this back. Uh, so as you can see, <laughs> stock form. <laughs> the long strike sucks. I'm not even giving it any benefit of the doubt over here. But um, yeah, this is just to maintain fairness uh, between the 
um, stock internals and the upgraded internals with the long strike X power kit. Yep. So now, please join me uh, as I do the installation, uh, perform the installation and some other mods uh, to the long strike uh, to improve the air seal in the plunger and stuff like that. Alright, so catch you in a short while. Here we are with uh, all the things that we actually need to perform the mod. Alright, not, not everything, some of it is optional, but anyway, I'm just going to list out what is and what is not and what I'll be using. Alright, first off, I'll start with the pipe cutters over here. Now, I do not know which size is going to be good or optimal for this mod, so I've, uh, you know, uh, prepared both my pipe cutters, the thinner one, the smaller one, and the bigger one, which I normally use. I kind of prefer this one, it's more sturdy, and um, it cuts a lot more evenly. So I'm going to set this aside first, and uh, the next thing we actually need is, of course, a whole bunch of screwdrivers. Um, you'll never go wrong with a flathead screwdriver. You might need it to yank stuff out, so I'm just going to put this one aside. This is just optional. All right, then we're going to have two sizes. Um, one is a regular, the usual size that you use to unscrew your screws on the shell of the Nerf Blaster. And uh, a smaller one, this one is to actually remove the screws for the bolt lock on the underside of the bolt stud. And uh, you'll see why later. And this is just a handle so I can actually fit all my screwdrivers in. Okay, so put that aside. This is just the cap of my screwdriver uh, set box and I'm going to use this to actually store some of the screws. Right, moving on, you need a claw hammer and uh, if you're wondering why, you'll thank me for it later. So i just put this aside first. Exacto knife, uh, some E-tape or Teflon tape. This goes under the um, stock plunger o-ring and uh, this is also an optional mod but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. So yeah this one aside and uh, you need a cutting board if you're going to perform that mod and I've already uh, cut it down to certain small strips over here um, might have to recut I don't know because this is just some leftover from uh, older mods that I've actually done before okay put this aside don't forget all your Explorer um, the X Power Long Strike Kit stuff so over this I'm going to put over here all this and uh, the spring goes here bolt slat goes here Okay, the whole grip with the two small little screws, please make sure that you do not lose these small little screws. So the two halves of the grip and uh, the long bolt, the two screws, and uh, yeah, the nut and the washer, set that aside. And of course you're going to need some of these uh, pretty good grease or your lubricant of your choice. And last but not least, of course, you need the main style of the show, which is the long strike. So yeah, as you can tell, I've already... Uh, removed or oh, I haven't even attached on actually uh, the other side of the bolt but honestly if you guys are you know having problems removing a bolt this is what you do uh, it's been said a thousand and one times and it's been said a uh, hundred and one times and a million and one times on both long strike and long shots that uh, if you want to remove your bolt you need to get a claw hammer basically slide it underneath and yank it upwards but uh, of course you get a scrap piece of paper put it under so you won't scratch your blaster and then you uh, sort of okay let me just try and try and emulate this for you so it's like for example if it's sitting like that just make sure it gets underneath there and then uh, slide your climber and yank it up okay so just put a bit of force on it and it'll come off of course don't push too hard downwards onto your blaster it might crack the shell so once you're done uh, I don't think you'll ever need this anymore if you're in installing the grip of the long strike x power kit so put that one aside, my paper goes away and we're done with the claw hammer so I'm going to set that one aside. So let's get straight down into it. So here we go. Gonna have to remove all the screws over here. We're starting from the top da -da 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 -da, all the way. Right. So I'm not gonna, probably gonna have time lapse and uh, fast forward this part. So yeah. So I'm done removing all the screws in the long strike. And as you can see, I've lined it all up over here, and I realized that, wow, Hasbro actually went through all the trouble to install different size screws into just this one blaster, and all in all, there are a total of four different size screws. So I'm just going to do this for the camera once, just so you guys have a reference point to check when you're actually removing the screws and installing them back on your long strike, and it's also for me in case I forget. Now, we start off with these short for uh, stumpy ones okay let's call them the stumpy ones and then there's these small short but thin ones over here 
and then there's these I'm gonna call the average size ones and of course the longest one of all so the longest one actually goes into this screw port over here this one right here so the longest one goes into the front the bottom half now the two uh, short and thin ones narrow ones are uh, actually go right next to the jam door just so you know they go right there and the other four line up the rest of the screw ports on the top so that's one two three and four All right and then the average ones go into whatever else is remaining just so you guys know All right so I'm gonna get all of this like I said put into a little place where you know you won't lose your screws unless of course you drop this holder and that would just suck but then you have no one else to blame but yourself so anyway I'm just gonna stop rambling and we're gonna split the blaster part in half but you have to take note that a long strike actually has two of these uh, rail attachment thingies over here so take note that you do not yank them out or they do not fly away so what I like to do is I always tend to put my finger on top of these guys over here like that uh, and I yank the blaster in half like so just so I can make sure that I'm holding on to them in place and pushing downward so that they won't jump out so there we go so this half we're going to put it aside and I'm going to take these guys out and put them in aside too over here now here are the internals of the long strike and what's going to be replaced is this 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 which I have to do some mods and I'm going to change the spring over here right so let's get into this part oh yes of course the bolt set is going to be changed too sorry I totally forgot about that so start off by removing the jam door and you realize that uh, you can actually just yank this guy out but I'm gonna just remove the dart tooth just over here right well this actually looks like it could fit and be used as a additional spring for the catch that's pretty sweet let's see I think it can alright let's try using this spring in a short while this comes from the uh, dart tooth area that you don't actually need now we're gonna have to remove everything else so we're gonna take this one out take out the spring rest out remove the old original spring here set it aside and then I'm going to take out the catch plate try to make sure it's the right side up the angled side is on the outside facing upward so this goes into the blaster this way alright so just take note of that trigger comes out trigger lock comes out there you go bolt slat and the old plunger system well, it looks like you can't really take this one out unless you remove the muzzle so that's what I'm going to have to do now muzzle area, barrel area and uh, the dart whatever dart gate I guess the, the chamber receiver right so now we're left with just this part uh, if you don't want to you can actually remove your clip lock and I'm going to do just that alright so now that almost everything is removed with the exception of this and this and this I'm going to put the shell aside and we shall begin work on the plunger and the whole bolt assembly over here so as you can tell stock seal isn't too fantastic and we can improve that by putting some e-tape underneath what the hell is this on my oh looks like some dirt got stuck inside that's disgusting oh yeah anyway I got some dirt on the inside of my uh, on my o-ring itself and that sucks but um, yeah I'm gonna upgrade the seal on that so I'm gonna have to wipe it down and put some e-tape underneath and um, before that we're gonna actually compare this area over here so I'm gonna line this up and uh, as you can tell I'm gonna remove this part first I'm gonna line this up 
over here not to the nub I'm gonna have to be about I'm gonna have to cut it off about here so this was what Looney was telling me WX Looney told me to cut off from here this part no more than one uh, centimeter or 10 millimeters from this ridge over here and uh, that's where my pipe cutters come in but um, I'm gonna have to see what I can do I'm gonna remove this guy first over here so grab something sharp like a pin or a very fine pen or I have this I don't know what you call this an ice pick uh, tip I don't know and I'm gonna push down in this slot to remove this metal pin over here we we'll actually need it in order for us to secure the um, nub onto the new bolt sled and I'm gonna just remove it this way so after some trial and error I actually managed to remove uh, the pin from this now we're gonna work with this fella over here so I'm just gonna wipe it down uh, remove all the grease or whatever I can or uh, the lubricant and I'll be using my flathead screwdriver over here just uh, lift out the o-ring like so put it aside and uh, make sure that um, you remove the grease or the lubricant on the inside of that groove over there and uh, just gonna run along uh, run it along with my uh, flathead screwdriver over here just to remove as much as I can probably won't be able to get all but uh, yeah the majority will be enough and then like I've mentioned I've already uh, pre-cut these uh, little strips over here so I'm just gonna use just uh, this length like that and I think this would suffice should be more than enough it's just a thin strip of course you can use the Teflon tape if you guys are uh, you know use Teflon tape but uh, I just prefer to stick with my E-tape so I stretch my E-tape in and I'll make sure that it sits nicely I'm gonna go a couple of rounds on this thing now for the sake of this video I'm not gonna try and keep testing and make uh, you know to make sure that it's a hundred percent but uh, as long as I'm getting an improvement I'm more than happy so I get this one back on and uh, test fit and uh, apparently it seems to be pretty good uh, if that's the case then I'm gonna lube it up in a short while but uh, before that sponger set it aside and uh, we are back to measuring this part over here alright so you can tell that when you line this this part up in the nubs you get about this length over here so I'm just gonna measure it quickly uh, with uh, my ruler and I'm gonna be using uh, centimeters so as you can tell uh, like Looney said whatever he said was right no more than one centimeter of this mark so there we go I'm gonna have to mark out that one centimeter mark and I'm gonna cut off from here you grab yourself a sharpie or some kind of a marker that you can make a mark with and uh, make sure that you just make a small one so just wipe off any excess grease on this area I don't know if this pen works but I'm just gonna try anyway just whatever I could pull out from uh, my drawer over there there we have it that's the mark so I'm gonna make sure that I do not exceed this mark so as you can tell if I'm gonna use this big pipe cutter over here uh, when this ridge lines up with this part over here it's going to be more than one centimeter so I have no choice but I have to use the smaller one smaller pipe cutter so I'm gonna use this one instead set it up just before the mark and we're gonna have to do this really slowly because this one doesn't cut too straight okay so I'm more or less done now I'll just put the pipe cutter aside and uh, so there it's not the most perfect cut but it'll do and uh, yeah all this excess stuff will probably just sit on the inside and uh, it's supposed to go on this way so let's try test fit wow it really sits pretty nicely over here and uh, I don't think there's gonna be any air leaks from this guy yeah there really isn't you can feel the pressure over here yep I'm pretty happy with that now that's installed I'm gonna put this whole new plunger tube or the chambering side aside chambering side chambering half sorry 
aside and I'm gonna be looking at the bolt set right now so uh, as I was mentioning earlier the Explorer bolt set actually comes with uh, you know no piece over here and uh, if you want to maintain the bolt lock you have to actually remove this and put this over here so uh, I'm gonna do just that uh, because um, I don't like the bolt lock to be gone so that I don't accidentally double prime my blaster um, so I'm going to be removing this part and installing it over here now to in order to remove this these two screws over here you aren't able to use you aren't able to use the usual screwdriver size so I'm going to switch it over to the small size one and I'm going to unscrew this so you got to be careful because uh, along with this piece uh, there's a little spring on the inside that's why it's able to you know come back into this position over here so just to take note when you're actually removing the screws on this guy over here okay so now I'm going to remove it very slowly and as you can see there is a spring on the inside here like that and I'll be removing the top piece so this piece now you have to line it this way in then you fit the spring in get the cover piece and uh, make sure that the spring sits onto this nub over here pulling it down into place and uh, fit the screws back and so after a bit of coaxing uh, the screws I managed to get this thing in so as you can tell now I have my bolt lock over here and uh, next step is to actually remember not to lose this pin over here for the bolt slat and then we're going to install the bolt slat back onto this chamber assembly over here so you just basically slip the nub of the receiver into the bolt slat like so and uh, please take note of the ridged area and make sure the rich area goes in last so this is smooth end and I'm going to slide the smooth end in and it seems to be a little bit tough slightly too small I guess the gap let's try from the other side the other side looks uh, fairly the same alright so I finally managed to get the pin in uh, not all the way though but I have to admit I was having some problems and uh, apparently the slot drilled out for this pin was a bit too narrow I had to actually employ the use of a hammer so for you guys take note uh, you might need to hammer your pin in into these two um, through all the way um, which isn't very uh, you know recommended because this is after all a bolt slat and uh, the wrong pressure or too much pressure from the hammer would actually cause it to break and uh, that was what was one of the problems I was facing and I didn't want to use too much strength so that is why my pin is not in all the way it's just so you guys know but anyway I've got it on to this uh, this much and I'm gonna continue with the installation process so once we're done with this that's when we break out the lube so lube again comes in right and I'm gonna loop this guy up all the way I am not going to pad this plunger okay so that you guys can you know you guys know and I'm gonna document it in case the plunger breaks because apparently according to the ninja Heng, uh, which is the brains behind the Explorer group he actually dry fired his long strike uh, over 20 times and it's still working fine alright so when installing back the plunger assembly please make sure that the uh, this little nub over here is on the top so is this half it's on the yeah, upside or the upper half okay so when we're done put this one aside now we're going to bring back the uh, long strike shell so out it comes here okay, and we're going to start to fit everything back one by one so we shall start with the trigger trigger goes here okay and uh, the clip the clip lock not really the lock but I'm just going to install this part of the clip uh, holder system or the clip release mechanism it's going to be just this part I'm not going to care about everything else so that uh, there is no clip lock so now you have this guy over here which uh, is supposed to sit uh, 
right. Doesn't want to go in. It's like supposed to sit right here. Uh, right there. So I had some trouble getting it in. It's supposed to sit here like that. Right. But uh, of course, I'm going to need this guy over here to keep it centered. Here's the original muzzle. And uh, I'm going to put this ring on the inside of the muzzle. Right here in the center. And make sure that it's all flush. Yep, so now it's flush. And uh, it's going to go in together. As you could tell from earlier, uh, we had some problems getting it out or getting it in. That's what she said. Alright, so now it's entirely up to you whether you want to screw in uh, the two screws over here. I will, because uh, I don't want to ha have these screws missing. So now this guy's back in place, I'm going to have to get this guy in place. Alright, so I'm going to just slip the whole thing in. Make sure that your uh, bolt slat the grooves over here line up with the grooves on this part the reels and tracks on this side right so once we're done we're gonna have to install the new spring so this one over here goes right on over here right so that's where the new spring is gonna go and uh, next part we're gonna have to install back the catch so remember like I said earlier the angled part is facing upwards so we're going to slip the catch on now the next thing is I mentioned earlier that we're going to try and install the new catch spring let's see if it, oh it slips on very nicely it slips on over the original catch spring and we're going to have to be a little bit more careful with this one so make sure that it sits in place when you install it don't let it slip out now it's double spring and it's sitting in there very nicely the next thing we're going to do is install back the spring rest and if you look closely you actually see that uh, on one side of the spring rest there's a little like a groove cut into it. I don't know if you can tell on the camera because of the lighting but uh, these grooves on this inside actually sit on the underside of the blaster downwards. So uh, these actually hook onto the screw ports over here. So you're going to ease the spring in and we're going to put this one nicely down and then we're going to install back the screws of the spring rest just so it's very secure right the last thing is to make sure that your catch springs sit nicely inside like so and uh, you have your new the installed internals of the long strike so on the back 6 kg spring uh, extra catch spring that you salvage up from one of the locks over here and uh, your 6 kg spring uh, your new plunger system your new bolt slap and uh, your whole entire new bolt and breech assembly so I'm gonna just uh, close up my blaster put back my uh, jam door don't forget these uh, real attachment thingies over here grab the other half of your blaster make sure everything lines up nicely and make sure none of it pops out when you're doing the uh, installation of the shell again the reinstallation of the shell grab my bin both of all my screws and I'm going to start installing my screws alright so now that we're done with uh, closing up your whole long strike shell we're going to move on oops sorry I hit the camera we're going to move on to installing the uh, grip so what the grip does basically is to enable you um, to be able to fire your long strike much like the recon in the same fashion as a recon and uh, remains ambidextrous and because it applies weight on equal sides of the bolt sled um, it doesn't uh, you know twist your bolt sled because it's an even style even style of priming let me give you an example of what I mean alright I was not able to show you uh, show this to you guys on a long shot because I always forgot about it but anyway since I'm here and we, we have a spare bolt sled and of course the priming handle over here let me show you what I mean say for example your bolt uh, actually sits like that so uh, for if you prime on the right side I wouldn't say for right handed people uh, if you prime on the right side you're actually pulling the force uh, of your prime uh, you know on the right so the bolts that will actually have to bend a little bit slightly towards the left before it gets pulled back and uh, same for vice versa or vice versa if you have it on the left instead now what this does is uh, eventually exerts unnecessary uh, unnecessary stress on one side especially over here because this is being held in straight so when you twist it this part over here is held in place and uh, you have your bolt 
actually pulling back this way you actually cause a uh, some stress on this side and on uh, the other side if you're using on the left so what happens if you actually have a straight bolt through with an even uh, priming uh, distribution you just pull the whole bolt set back instead so the force is evened out on both sides so that is why uh, we we models usually um, recommend having shotgun grips or even style of priming for your bolt mechanism or bolt style priming blasters alright so here we go uh, take a look at this now this is pretty sweet so it actually sits like that onto your long strike and it when I say sit in, I mean sit like you can see the grooves on the inside and it's made very very beautifully and it actually sits onto the rail side the rail uh, this little slot over here of your long strike and uh, you basically pull it back to prime it all the way like so and you push it forward much like a recon like I mentioned so yeah well sorry I have to mention this I was just playing around with it and uh, it's really made very nicely on the outside and even when you prime it back this over here is cut out perfectly just for the back of this thing over here and that's just amazing so yeah, so here we go uh, you basically fit on one half first and then you get the other half and you fit it on then you have to line it up very nicely and make sure that you install the screws so we're going to do just that right now apparently the screws that came with uh, the grip are just way too big and uh, they don't make sense because as you can tell why would you want the screw head to be sticking out like that it's sitting almost on the maximum already yep so well lucky me I managed to find some screws that would fit and uh, as you can see how small this screw is I don't think everybody's going to be as lucky as me to find a pair of these and uh, just so you can see it's in comparison <laughs> next to each other the size difference between the two screws there so you actually need a small screw like this in order for you to screw this. I already have one inside there so I'm just going to install the next one you can see it's almost a perfect fit there we go so I don't believe that these two screws are the wrong ones next uh, we're going to have to install this bolt and we're going to bolt it all the way through just make sure that the slots all line up all the way through I don't know if the washer goes on the outside do you think the washer goes on the outside I'll just leave the washer on the outside so I'll put it in this way I right, make sure it lines up with the slot on the priming bar it goes all the way through as you can see it comes out on this end over here and then we're going to put this nut we're going to take this nut and uh, slide it on and we're going to screw it in to place hmm so it seems it's a little bit loose you guys can tell so I'm gonna have to try and find a solution for that okay whoops sorry about that I ran out of memory space and then I ran out of batteries so I had to go recharge and I had to go clear up the memory space and during that time I actually uh, found a solution to the last problem that I showed you guys um, I actually found a size I believe it's a size 6 um, nut on this side and I slotted it in and on this side, as you can see, it's the original washer that came with uh, this piece over here. And um, yeah, I finished up this guy, but I want to point out another thing that I actually face, another issue I face, and that would be that you have to actually remove um, two nubs on each side or the back of the rail. Uh, it's the part where it stops your rail attachments from uh, going too far back or sliding off the back. So you have to find a way to remove that. And uh, what I did was I actually got a pair of wire cutters and I cut out this part and I actually took some uh, needle files and actually filed it down so it was smooth so um, now it primes like that and, uh, yep so basically that's what uh, it's like you know, very much as a recon and uh, removing the trigger lock actually lets me do this uh, ease the spring alright so um, what's gonna happen next I'm actually gonna fire off uh, the same six darts that I did uh, when this guy was in stock form and I'll be firing it there and um, if I do get the chance to actually lay out some uh, um, the lay out the measuring tape and do an official um, range test, I will actually put the annotation up somewhere around here. But uh, I'm not. All right, so I'm just gonna give you guys a quick demonstration first before I go into the pros and cons of this thing. All right, so I've loaded up with six uh, the same ping foam stephens. Darts are out, so it's empty now. Yep, 
Should I have a close look first before I carry on? Alright, so on to the pros and cons of this thing before you guys actually make your decision. I will start with the pros first. First pro, this grip is really good. I really like the idea of replacing your bolt or the charging handle um, with a priming bar or priming grip that is very much like the Recon and this one is a lot more comfortable. Um, it's got a good size to it. I can fit my entire palm on it. Uh, it's a you know, it has nice ridges where it sits comfortably against my hand and my fingers and this part providing a pretty good grip along with these over here and uh, this thing is shaped really beautifully and um, makes it so much easier to prime as, uh, as compared to say priming a Recon Pro number 2 as a testament to the power now you can tell uh, through the firing demo and you could see that I could actually fire off these Stefans at a pretty good velocity towards that direction as opposed to what I showed you earlier in the video where it was just <laughs> dropping Stefans out. Pro number 3. The breech now has a pretty good seal as I showed you guys. Uh, it actually takes me a little bit of effort to pull it back. You kind of feel it uh, actually stick into place well. Uh, actually nests pretty good like, uh, like how it feels like if you uh, attach something, attach a barrel onto a coupler and that to me is an improvement from the long shot uh, Explorer X Power Kit. Pro number 4, it comes with a pretty good, pretty sturdy bolt sled and I think the bolt sled investment is a really good idea. Uh, what makes this kit for me, I feel, is just the grip and the bolt sled alone. These two things uh, are really the stars of this kit in my opinion. Now on to the cons of this kit. Now the first con isn't really a con, it's more like a wish or a request that the Explorer Group actually provides the correct items and uh, correct size stuff to go with the kit. Now it sucks that I had to actually find and uh, you know go source for the correct screw sizes over here to go source for the correct nut over here to attach to this uh, bolt you know things like that. I feel that those kind of stuff should have been included with the kit itself. Con number two is that uh, it's no longer just a drag and drop type of kit. First of all you have to cut you know, uh, make ad adjustments to your shell over here, you have to cut off the two nubs or ridges on the side over here and you have to actually destroy your plunger tube. Not really destroy but you have to cut it up and attach the new um, breech assembly and uh, I don't think that's a really good idea because once you cut it, if you make a mistake then there's no going back and uh, this mod, it means that this mod is just irreversible. Uh, lucky for me I have another spare set of long strike internals in case I want to uh, go back or revert back to the stock breech and uh, receiver assembly. Uh, that was actually taken from my sniper rifle, in case you guys don't know. Con number three is the fact that after you install this whole kit, you're only able to use the Explorer Stefan clip. And to me that is a huge disappointment because I expected it to be sort of an upgrade from the long shot Explorer kit. And uh, I don't know, just being, you know, restricted to being only able to use the Explorer Stefan clips is kind of sad because a lot of nerfers out there, like myself for example, stock up a lot on uh, clips and drum magazines and stuff like that and uh, you know you don't want to render all of these obsolete and also these Explorer Stefan clips don't come cheap and uh, to me that really limits your um, nerfing experience. I own this kit now and I also own the Explorer Long Shot X Power Kit and I only have one Stefan clip and that means that I can't have uh, I can't uh, you know, bring both of these to the same wall without having the need to take out this clip and start to reload it on the fly and uh, that really is kind of disappointing. The only difference is that um, right now uh, for the long shot X power kit you're not able to close the breech uh, you install or you insert a nerf size standard clip but for this one you're actually able to check it out it holds it in. So. Uh, the only thing is that because of the way the breech X or the, the, the length of the distance of the, the, the breech travels, it's not able to let a dart travel upwards. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to try and push the dart, the clip in, and you guys can see that uh, the dart does not even make it half the way up uh, into the whole chamber. Yeah, and that's kind of sad. I feel the Explorer should have. Uh, you know, put some thought into this and uh, you know give its uh, fans and buyers the ability to still use the stock nerf clips to me that is a really big drawback last but not least I am very very disappointed with the fact that they went for copper as the barrel material uh, as compared to the long shot X power uh, Explorer X power kit 
that one had a barrel that was made out of aluminium and this one has a barrel made out of copper now I don't know why they chose copper uh, I have really no idea but if they had done some research they would know that the uh, most popular or the tried and tested best barrel materials would be either PTG brass or uh, something like that or the sort uh, CBVC sorry I slipped my mind but definitely not brass the only uh, definitely not copper sorry the only time I've seen copper being used in enough application is for the clip area of an RCB and uh, I mean we've been all nerfing for so long now and nerf has been on you know uh, the modding community has been around for so many years and uh, through so much testing trying out calculations and you know all the experiments most of the time we have always deducted that uh, CBVC or brass or PTG would be the best barrel material so I have no idea why Explorer uh, such a popular modding um, group I wouldn't say a modding group modding kit manufacturer would go for something that is not an optimal barrel material now truth be told if I grab a uh, streamline dart it just slips right through check it out it slips right through and that really sucks it's not even able to hold a streamline now if I were to put say for example my own Stefan darts right, it sits just there as you can see right but it's not the optimal barrel uh, size or the optimal barrel for um, Springer blasters yeah, so I had to do that to get the dart out and uh, the fact that it's copper means that it oxidizes a lot more and has that powdery copper residue and to illustrate what I mean by that residue I have with me a FDL dart uh, you guys can see it's pretty clean okay uh, green around the top with no dirt I'm gonna insert this dart halfway down the barrel and uh, I'll just give it a twist like that and I'll take it out and you can see now it's a uh, it's stained with the, the copper residue on the the tip of the dart and uh, especially on this area and to me that is pretty darn disappointing um, so that to me is another very big drawback now if you guys are interested in purchasing this kit uh, please drop an email to explorer underscore sg at hotmail.com uh, or you can go visit the explorer dart development uh, dart blaster development facebook page sorry for the interruption once again guys i've just been updated with the price list for the items and i want to share it with you guys so the explorer x power kit for the long strike actually cost 95 sing the bolt snap cost 50 sing dollars and the grip cost 60 sing dollars so just want to make that very clear to you guys so if you want to get everything together it's going to cost you about 205 singapore dollars but it, you can actually buy it separately back to the video to me that is sky high for a kit like that with the fact that you have to actually cut up your plunger tube and you have to you know do the external mods on your own and uh, you know the fact that you cannot use this it's not like the long shot it doesn't give you crazy power um, it just gives you I'm gonna estimate about 40-50 feet with those ping foam Stefan darts that I fired out and uh, to me they could have done better and uh, if you guys ask me, I would recommend that you do not get this kit. Uh, I mean, unless, okay, like I said, you want to get it for the two main stars, the bolt sled and this grip. This grip is really beautiful, though. I'm going to keep this on. Uh, I'm already 80% leading towards changing the internals back to the stock internals with my spare internal set and uh, just using the bolt sled and, uh, you know, with the upgraded spring, of course. I don't really dig this uh, breech, even though it's a you know it provides a better seal but the fact that I cannot use my standard size nerf clips is really uh, you know something that's bugging me I apologize about my stuffy nose uh, I seem to have caught a cold while I was modding this thing and it's kinda sad but yeah I'm just gonna finish up this video anyway uh, so if you guys are interested please go contact the Explorer guys uh, to me this grip and the bolts that main styles of the kit makes the whole kit uh, worth but value for money wise definitely not um, if you guys overseas have access to you know OMW because in Singapore apparently uh, it depends on your luck sometimes you might get stopped it might get confiscated so uh, don't don't try your luck uh, I'm just warning you guys I managed to get my uh, recon Osaka kit and I'm lucky but I actually heard that someone else's recon kit uh, has gotten confiscated by the authorities and uh, I know that OMW is uh, you know already has released their um, other internals for the other 
pluses for the Masaka kids. I'm sorry, I'm just rambling on. But if you're able to actually uh, have a combination of this grid with the Explorer Bolt Flat and the other internals replaced with the OMW kits, I think that would be the perfect uh, combination. Uh, because this grip really makes priming a lot easier, a lot more comfortable. As you could have told, it's almost effortless now. Doesn't even take me much strength, and of course, I'm using a 6 kg, 6 kg uh, upgraded spring, and that's pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah, it really makes the uh, long strike a lot more user friendly. Uh, but of course, if you want something smaller, just get a recon. <laughs> or we could all just wait for the retaliator or you know, the whole elite line, and we'll see how that goes from there. And that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for sitting all the way through watching my trial and error installation, my real time, you know, <laughs> installation as I faced problems and how I solved it. Uh, apparently, I needed more tools than I actually announced at first, so I'm sorry. But uh, this was the installation and the review and a close up look of the Explorer Long Strike X Power Kit. Now, please uh, think twice before you actually put down some money for this. Uh, by far, the best. Um, product that the Explorer group has actually put out is still the long shot shotgun grip that's the most amazing thing and um, yeah if I left out any details uh, pertaining to this kit I apologize and uh, I really do hope that Explorer watches this video uh, please you guys uh, please put into you know please consider some of the suggestions that I had made to you guys uh, please think about uh, using a better barrel material apart from copper please think about you know the compatibility with the Nerf standard clip sizes you know and uh, please go think about how you can improve this design or the internal design to uh, a new one where you don't actually have to make any um, adjustments or any modifications to the shell or the internals or the stock internals uh, I would say uh, I guess the aim is more like a drag and drop thing and uh, if we're talking about drag and drop then uh, for that amount of money uh, to be spent on your kit Honestly, I would rather have uh, took the risk and bought an ONW kit. Now, I don't mean to discriminate. I'm not trying to be biased, but I'm just giving you my very real opinion right here. So uh, to all of you viewers and all your Explorer fans, I hope that I don't offend you, but this is my two cents. And uh, I just want to keep things real. And um, really, I really am amazed by this script. I really like it a lot. Uh, thanks again, WX Looney, for dropping it by my place. Uh, thanks for the delivery. And... Uh, hope that uh, the Explorer group will come up with more uh, even better mod kits in future and they would actually take my concerns and into consideration yeah so that's about it guys I hope that uh, you know you found this video worth your time watching and uh, I really hope that it gives you a better insight on the new kit that was announced by the Explorer group thanks for watching everybody stay tuned for my next video which is coming really soon peace